Max, thank you very much for joining me. I, I hope you appreciate that I dress for the occasion because I, I heard floral. I went floral. Brother, yeah. My floor is my floor got a little point down though. So okay, I need to cool. I need to work on it. And also, if I'm honest, one of the buttons popped off the shirt, so I had to sellotape it back on. But you know, it's still good. If we look good, then we feel good. You know? hey, yeah, bro. You look good, you feel good, you perform good, right? You you're actually really good. I would I would, I would use that outfit, bro, 100%. It's on the back of the book. With when the watch it... and the Converse and the high <laughs> socks game, bro. You no. just, all you're missing is a gold chain, bro. That's it. That'll be next. This fight, you know, third time. I, I know you've had rematches in the past before with Aldo and stuff, but for this one, it feels like this name has just been thrown at you over and over and oh. over again. At this point of fight week, are you kind of bored of talking Alexander Volkanovsky or do you just think like, well, shit, this is what we have to talk about? I mean, it is what it was, you know. It well, was what it is. Yeah, it's the, it's a fight, you know. That's yeah. where we at, you know. And uh, we're here, and I can't wait, man. I can't wait. We're finally here, you know. Uh, two years later, since the first one, year and a half since mm -hmm. since the second one, you know, I got five title wins. This being the six title wins in front of my family, friends, finally get to be fans mm -hmm. in the ninth island. You know, if I'm not getting UFC Hawaii, this is the next best thing ever. So, you know, and, and it being Alex, this is a cherry on top. Yeah. I feel like your relationship with Alex is an interesting one, right? Because I don't think you have like bad relationships with anybody. Uh -huh. But there's definitely, I see, I saw you guys on the embedded sort of running into each other uh -huh. at, the, at the PI and stuff. There definitely seems to be this sense that fans look at either one of you as 1A and 1B, right? You guys are so close, uh -huh. but I feel like both of you look at each other as like, no, I'm one and he's two. There's yeah, a difference. Yeah. Is that true? Is that how you feel? I mean, I, he might think that way. I don't care, you know? I'm, I I think I'm the best in the world. I think I'm, I'm the one guy in the world. There's no two after, you know? If he, if he ain't one, then, then what is it, you know? And, mm -hmm. and then there can be two ones that make you number 11, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. You know, I, I I carry myself as a champ. You know, and, and that's the belief that you need not only in this sport, in any sport, in anything you do, even the journalist. You need to carry yourself like you're the best damn journalist out there, or nobody else is gonna believe it. You know, <laughs> well dressed journalist. You know? So at the end of the day, it's uh, that's how it is. You know, that's the mindset, that's the champion mindset that I carry myself around, and that's what we do. In a way, then. And I, I know it does matter, of course, but in a way, does the championship itself, it's, it's sort of secondary, right? Like, if I beat Alex, I'm the best in the world yeah. of this division. So the title just comes with that. Is, the, is it really the victory that matters as opposed to the championship? I mean, at the end of the day, this is just a legacy fight, you know? It's a legacy fight. It's huge, you know? I mean, like you said, we fought twice. And, uh, you know, it obviously wasn't too convincingly two times because we're here for a third, finally. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when you go on after that is... We're two guys who's at the top end of the pound for pound rankings, right? Yeah. And, you know, whenever you hear that question, like, oh, wow, that's crazy because when is the last time this ever happened in the last decade, you know? Yeah. And the only thing that comes in mind to me is DC and Jones. Mm -hmm. So for us to be a part of history in that way, too, is uh, it's amazing. And I just can't wait for it. Come Saturday night. Do you think there's a chance that you two could be the first guys to fight each other four times in the UFC? Uh, actually, it's already beaten. Ain't, ain't, oh, I mean... I mean, Moreno and stuff got to go to the fourth. Yeah, yeah, they're they're not yet. You might beat them yet. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. We see what happens. You know, I all I can do is fight. You know, my name's not Dana White, Hunter Campbell, yeah, Mick Maynard, Sean Shelby. You know, I don't meet up with those guys on Tuesdays. <laughs> you know, I, I all I do, I get paid to fight. You know, so I go in there and fight. What was the biggest difference you think between the first fight and the second fight? Um. I, I, the biggest difference was that I think maybe I was landing a little bit more bigger blows, you mm -hmm. know. And the the first two, you know, like the first two fights, you know, you don't cry over spilled milk, you know. There's there's three judges sit octagon side, you know, and and both times they went the other way, and that's just the way it is, you know. But you know, the difference to me is I would say it was just I I thought I did enough in both of them, and the second one, the difference from the first and second was like I was landing bigger shots you know that was that everybody could see what was happening what was going on but what happens happens bro it's, it's an interesting one right because you're such a chill guy and you're so laid back but it must be a weird feeling when you're like well i was in there i feel like i won uh -huh. loads of people are telling me that i won uh -huh. these three guys who get to decide if i won said i didn't yeah is there a feeling of like well what the, what the fuck was i meant to do then like, i mean at, at the end of the day you know when it's all said and done uh 
uh, like like you said, there's two guys saying Atagan or women, whatever it is, saying Atagan side, judging the fight, you know, and they went the other way, you know, and I can't say nothing, you know, after the fight, Dana White had to say about it in the mm-hmm. second one, half the UFC roster had to say the, uh, say about everyone, about, about the fight, and if I said anything, it would just be me adding more fuel to the fire for what? Yeah. For what reason? You know, it would not change nothing. It's not going to change those two guys' opinions <laughs> that they, they already put, you no. know? So, I I really didn't care, you know? I even I didn't even do media for like six months after that fight, yeah. to be honest, you know? I was in breach of my contract, I believe, <laughs> because of that, so. <laughs> Don't remind them. Yeah, it, it is what it is, man. Do you feel that, uh, do you, are you imp- I know you've always rated Alex, right? You 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 appreciate him as a fighter. Uh-huh. Have you been impressed with his fight since fighting you? I mean, he's been winning, you know. Yeah. I, I I would lie to you and tell you oh, I've been watching his fight because I haven't, you know. Yeah. I haven't been watching his fight, you know. I, as, I saw as a pro- professional streamer now. Yeah, you know, exactly. Fighting gets in the way almost I, these I, days. It does. I mean, <laughs> I I think I was streaming during the um during his fight with uh. Korean zombie. You should have been one of those guys faking watching the real fights, yeah. pretending to play along. That'd like, be funny. Some, that, that guy actually got banned. He was doing my fight in Aldo. <laughs> oh, oh yes, he was. was yeah. That fight, yeah. That guy actually got banned. So Dana like, kicking his door in, yeah. like, where is he? <laughs> That's hilarious. But yeah, I, I don't watch fights too much, you know, especially I see the clips and he looked great. He looked good, you know, especially in the uh, the Korean zombie fight, yeah. you know. But, you know, my coaches watched the fight. They told me, they, they just told me, hey, look, what we thought was gonna happen, so you probably don't need to watch it too much. Right. We, you know, we kind of had an idea the way the fight was gonna plan out. It planned out that way, and uh, I was like, okay, cool. Do you expect him to try anything different, or you? Because you've, you know, you spent two fights in there with him now. You thought I kind of got him figured out, right? Uh-huh. He can only change so much. I mean, I mean, you know, the hardcore fans, the hardcore, uh, the hardcore journalists, as yourself, you guys all know it. It is different. You know, it's the same guy, same teams, but different game plans, mm-hmm. different things we're gonna apply, different mind games, you know, every, everything everything is different, you know, it's the same two guys going in there, but we we are coming in at a different angle and I know I know they are too, you know, yeah. like I said, I had I had 10, uh, 10 rounds in there with him, you know, 50 minutes, he had 50 minutes with me, so, yeah. and the first 25 minutes was different from the second, yeah. you know, and this third is gonna be, I believe it's gonna be different too, you know, it, it, even if there there is 25, you know, I feel good, I feel great, I've been saying, man, we'd be lucky if we see uh, more than three rounds after this one. This might sound like a weird question, but do you think there's something about you that annoys him? I feel like whenever your name comes up, he kind of, maybe it's that competitive spirit, right? But he seems uh-huh. to just sort of think, no, 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 it's probably because he thinks he's the best, right? But do you uh-huh. think there's something about you that he kind of doesn't feel comfortable with or it annoys him a bit? I don't know. You know, that's something that you ask him immediately day. Well, I need it tomorrow. Yeah. You ask him immediately. I can ask him uh, <laughs> Does Max Holloway annoy you? <laughs> At the end of the day, I don't know. I really don't know. You know, it, I, I guess we are humans. I guess he might be. I guess he might be. I know. I know for a fact. It, uh, not for a fact, but I know his, you could probably ask his coach too. They're probably annoyed by me. I don't know why, but it is what it is. I guess because so, they gotta get ready for me again and again yeah. and again. So who knows? You know, I, I I can't speak on that, but. Yeah. Yeah. you're an interesting spot right Max because you said it already it's a legacy fight and I agree with you and it feels I know Josh Emmett's coming he's going to be cage side but it almost feels like you can do what you want right yeah. if, if you win you can be the champion you can carry on 145 or you can just put the belt down and say I'm done with 145 do you have any feelings on that or do you just kind of think like well I'll see how I feel as the time uh, comes yeah no feelings on that whatsoever you know um, I got you know I got history with the with that guy, I can I still consider the 155 champ, you know, and Charles yeah. Oliveira. We have history there, um, you know. I got history, uh, night history, dream matchups at 55 that fans keep throwing out there. Yeah. We on the short list on Connor all the time, you know. So at the end of the day, 55 is not that far away, but you know, first things first. We got we got Alex. The Connor fight feels like I don't want to. It feels somewhat inevitable, right? It feels like like you just said, you're always on a short list, like you two. You're never far away the two names uh-huh. and i know that's one that you wouldn't mind who wouldn't want yeah. to have that fight do you look at that and sort of think if i fight this way this way this way then we get there or do you just think hey look it, it just comes when it comes I right, it comes when it comes that's the way i think you know connor connor gonna fight who he wants to fight you know at the end of the day he still gotta commit to come back i know i know he's been saying everybody's like he said he want to come back this and that but it's like 
we didn't really actually see commitment commitment like i didn't like you know and he didn't talk to dana whatever's yeah. going on posting he's doing other stuff or maybe with boxing you know again so you know whatever it is you know because at the end of the day like if i was connor you know what i mean if i was sitting on my lamborghini yacht chilling with my kids and my family looking like a 24 7 hour vacation who that's that's what that's the dream you know that's the fighter's dream they want to get to that point and then get out the game you know so i wouldn't blame him if he didn't want to come back in the game but i understand uh from the competitive mindset you know he, he, he don't really have that he's not doing nothing else you know like i do streaming and competitiveness yeah. so maybe when i retire i can get into esports or something you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah his competitiveness I don't, I don't know what what else he got on the side you know he's not posting nothing and maybe it is funny and coming back so at the end of the day you know i mean you know us you know me and him you know we'll probably be 100 years old trying t- twitter jabs at each other you know who knows <laughs> i think he uh, i think he has a gym on the lamborghini yacht at least oh, so yeah? he's still working out yeah, exactly. so, so there's still something yeah there. i see the competitiveness don't go you know if i had a lamborghini yacht i would have my stream set up <laughs> playing, playing uh, apex, awesome. Le- uh, apex legends on there you know you mentioned charles um quickly and you said that you think he's still the 155 pound champion and it did seem like that commission and everything was a little bit yeah, confusing right you know yeah. it was a bit weird um is that a fight you're interested in or is that just like look he's at the top of that division if i move up there that would be the guy i'm fighting uh you know we see what happens you know for sure i mean i think i think if you tell him my name i think he'd be super interested to try to get down back you know so he's around this week yeah so i'll ask him for you ask him you know so at the end of the day it's uh why not you know but like i said i got alex first and we focus on alex but you know with him and them there's a bunch of 55ers you know even poor up there you know yeah. who knows you know the the yeah the first two whatever it's gonna be the same as this one you know but it's like <laughs> the second one that you know people you know it could have gone either way you know so it's cool we'll end with this thing because that that just brings to mind an interesting question right okay so it's the first two but does it say something to you that like, well, no one ever counts me out in the third one. Like uh-huh. if they book a third one, no one ever, no one ever can say I'm going to lose definitely. Like everyone mm-hmm. still thinks I have a shot. Is that, is that a cool thing to know? To I mean, that? it is what it is. You know, I'm a fighter. You know, the way I approach fights is like, I'm 1-0 every fight and I approach the fight like it's my first and my last because you never know in this sport, right? But at the end of the day, it is cool to hear, you know, especially my peers, you know, having my back and being like, yo, what's going on? Or supporting me on the stuff. Even the peers of the Poyer fight, you know what I mean? It was pretty much split just like the Volk fight, you know? So at the end of the day, it, it's cool. It's cool hearing that, cool having support. It's always cool having support, you know? Mm-hmm. Who, who doesn't like it? If you, if you don't like it, kind of weird. 